do 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 hey what it do y'all it's your boy e2 blue coming back at you again man and it is what's today thursday 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 you know you know the days go by so fast i don't even know what day it is um just getting off of work um tired still hot outside it is what it is but fall's coming though fall's coming you know fall's coming because football season is back you know, looking forward to Cowboys football, playing against Tampa Bay at home. That's going to be a really good game. Um, Cowboys might have a better chance of winning the game now that, you know, we see the issues that they have going on on their side of the ball, too. But enough of that. Um, Cowboys did make two moves outside of their own, uh, you know, resigning their guys. Of course, I told you guys already that, you know, don't worry when they cut players that you really like because, Cowboys, you know, one thing, if I could say one good thing about this team is they're really good at roster adjusting and moving and manipulating the roster. I mentioned in the last video about, you know, how we're allowed to have 17 players on, on the practice squad and stuff like that. So, you know, that with that flexibility, they're able to throw people on the practice squad, even veterans. So, like, the rules of yesteryear where – Oh, well, if you played more than three or four years in the league consistently, a certain amount of games or whatever the situation was, um, you, you don't have eligibility to practice squad. So since those eligibility rules relaxed from the pandemic, they still are at this point. So, you know, I guess you could thank, you know, our owners as well, because they're on that competition committee and stuff like that, that, you know, talks about these rules and the things, you know, that, that pertain to that. So with that being said, um, just wanted to talk about two guys uh, that the Cowboys picked up from other rosters or whatever that, that were released. Um, they're just going to be practice squad players for right now um, for depth purposes because every team needs depth. Um, we know that Jason Peters is in the house doing his physical and, and talking with the team. And the team's trying to figure out if Jason Peters really wants to play football still, uh, whether it's a good fit for him in Dallas. Um, and if that's the case, they'll more than likely sign him. So we're still waiting on word for that. But until then, um, Cowboys signed tackle. They signed another Dak. They signed tackle Dakota, not Dakota with a T, but Dakota with a D. Dakota, not Dakota, not Dakota, but Dakota uh, Shipley. He's a tackle out of uh, the University of British Columbia. So, you know, the Canadian guys. Um, 6'5", 290 pounds. He's 27 years old. He's a former fifth overall pick of the Canadian Football League back in 2018. So when I explain this part, it's, you're going to be like, damn, he jumped around a lot. And I think a lot of that has to do with the pandemic, um, you know, him getting the opportunity to probably go to the NFL. So he was like, well, the NFL is calling me to come try out for them, but I'm with the Canadian Football League, I could probably make more money with the NFL. So I'm just assuming these are the things that happen with him jumping around like this. So here it is. Um, he went on to become an, un an NFL undrafted free agent um, after, for whatever reason, after he got drafted with the Canadian Football League, I guess he got an opportunity to get on an actual NFL team and that team was the Jets. Now, we know how the Jets organization is. They don't know how to deal with players, clearly, because Denzel Mims is trying to get the hell out of there. But with that being said, um, he then returned to the CFL um, after not making the roster after, you know, um, you know, the cut downs. He went back to the CFL and played for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Then after that, he came back to the NFL again to join the 49ers in 2020 during the pandemic. And and then in the Seahawks in 2021. Now he's a free agent again, um, looking for a job. Dallas Cowboys decided to, you know, pick him up off the street, put him on a practice squad. Um, as someone that can compete for a swing tackle or a backup role or anywhere we, where he can fit. But he is a tackle. Um, the second person that we got for the practice squad is Quadre Olison. Um, running back 6'1", 232 pounds out of Pittsburgh. He's a he's a former ACC offensive rookie back in 2015, and he's a power back. Um, 
They played uh, for uh, previously played with the Atlanta Falcons. Your boy Dan Quinn actually drafted him when he first came into the league. Um, one funny thing about him is that like he had like I think 21 yards or 40 something yards. It was like a low number of yardage, but had scored four touchdowns, which shows you how much of a power back he is using him in the red zone and things of that nature. So that should help the Cowboys, you know, if he gets up there. So I'll, I'll explain his his status in a second. Um, so yeah, he's a former um, Atlanta Falcon. So you know Dan Quinn knows him personally. So, you know, that was one of his guys coming in that he drafted. Now, uh, we know that the running back room right now consists of Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, and your boy Rico Dowdle. Now, those three are rounding off the, the, the running back list right now. Uh, we did re-sign Malik uh, Davis back to the roster. He's on the practice squad. So, him and Olison will be... Um, fighting on the practice squad to see who can get moved up to that 53-man roster at any given day. Um, so Rico Dowdle, you better be on point, man, and watch your back because these two young guys back here are ready. I've seen what Malik Davis could do. I like him. The team likes Malik Davis, and the special teams coordinator definitely likes him too because they used him as the um, um, uh, the personal protector on punt coverage. And Whoever the the, the per personal protector is, you know that you got to be good at what you're doing if a team is giving you that type of position and you're an undrafted guy. So think of it like that. I keep trying to tell you guys, running back is more than just running the ball up the gut. And some people lose sight of that. They forget about pass, pass protection. They forget about, you know, situations where the running back is and what he can do when the ball is not in his hand as well. Is just as important in the NFL. Guaranteed that. So, um, again, these two guys are practice squad players for now. Depth purposes, we'll see what happens throughout the season and see if these guys can, we'll see more from these guys and see if they can do something. One thing about the Dallas Cowboys, I would say, they've always taken undrafted guys or guys that were like um, lower draft picks and done something with them. And these guys came out and actually you know, became players and then other teams picked them up and then they've gotten even better. So, you know, with with that, I would say you never know. You you, you miss you, you miss the opportunities if you don't take the shots. So take the shots. Even if you miss, I mean at least you still tried. You were still there. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. We're still waiting on word about Jason Peters and whoever else they decide to sign as a veteran on that offensive line because the Cowboys are going to need it right now. Um, our defensive line is playing really good right now. I'm loving the pressure we're putting on teams. I'm loving the fact that we're stopping the run much more than we were before. So with all that being said, I'm a happy camper. So, uh, But um, we still got some things to do, some holes to fill. Michael Gallup is not going to be ready for week one. I don't care what y'all say. Yes, they cleared him. But Britt Brown and them ain't stupid. They know. They know that boy ain't ready for week one. Now, Jerry Jones making a comment about if we play the Super Bowl, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we play the Super Bowl, his ass will be out there. But I don't want I don't want that for him. So let's just look at it like this and just try to stay on the positive end of things and just see what happens. That's that's where I'm at right now, you know. I understand the frustration of a lot of fans and, you know, everything that's been transpiring or the lack thereof, I should say. You know, we get a lot of scrutiny being Cowboy fans because we're one of the most hated teams in the league and we're going to have headliners that make it all about the Cowboys one so they can make money because they think they slick. I know what it is. Trust me, I know what y'all doing over there. But in the meantime, between time, let me know what you guys think in the comment box about these guys that the Cowboys drafted, what you think about uh, where they are, you know, this coming season. Are you excited about the potential add of one or two of these individuals or both? Who knows? With that being said, y'all, like, share, subscribe to the channel. It's your boy, E2 Blue, always keeping it real.